Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, December 17th. So we have the moon in Libra all day. It is an air sign. So there's a lot of, let's say, mental processing. There's a lot of communication. We are chatty Cathy's. We are looking to have that communicative exchange and bounce ideas off of each other. But we like to keep things light and fluffy. So I don't know that we're going to get too deep with our heart to heart conversations. We like to keep things a little bit uh, playful, if you will. And the whole point of the moon being in Libra and energy is to expose to us where it is that we're thinking and feeling and living in extremes in order for us to find a middle ground, a peaceful point in between. This is where compromise and negotiation comes in, especially with ourselves. So there are 11 different aspects here today, a relatively busy day in the cosmos, and 10 of them involve the moon. The moon is going to interact with Saturn in a very awkward way. Mr. Karma himself ruling over roles and responsibilities, foundations and structures, who is in Aquarian energy. The Libran energy, the Aquarian energy, are both air energies. So we're, you know, very stimulated, if you will. However, we are thinking very much about the future and what it is that we want to create what it is that we want to build. But we're having a hard time, emotionally speaking, letting go of the past. Again, if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you would know that we're in this very awkward stage of adjustment right now. We're about to wrap this cycle up and start a new one with the solstice energy. And for the most part, we are in this in-between realm of things ending, things not yet beginning. And because of this, we're feeling a lot of the extremes that come with making some major changes. The moon bumps into the true node, which is going to help us out a whole lot because this is a positive vibe. This is us kind of realizing where it is that just when we get excited, the fear kicks in trying to pull us back. Just when we feel hopeful about the future, we start kind of adopting that negative narrative. And the moon interacting with the true node in this way, which is our our soul's path and our destiny point has us really, really defining what it is that we need to do to just take the smallest of baby steps in order to point ourselves in the right direction. Again, it's pulling ourselves out of that extreme emotion, those extreme thoughts, and just kind of, you know, zoning in, honing in on what it is that we could just focus on as far as a little change or a little baby step goes. Now, the moon is going to square Venus. Venus rules over this Libra and energy. So anytime that we encounter the ruler of the energy that the moon is currently in, it's a little bit more intense than we would like. And this is a square. So this is already intense. This is already a tension point, already a conflict point. What are we cluster after about? Well, our heart space. We don't know what it is that we want. We don't know what it is that that's going to make us happy. We don't know what it is that we need from the people that we love in our lives. We don't know what to do about our money matters. We don't know what to do about our future goals. Again, there is this sense of unraveling, needing to sit in one extreme in order to actually see the other extreme and how it is that we pull ourselves out of this funk. And just as we kind of settle into that funk, it doesn't last very long, not even a half hour later, the moon goes ahead, bumps into Uranus in a positive way, thankfully, because Uranus brings us clarity through an aha moment, through an epiphany through an inner realm change. This is when we recognize our want, need and desire for a little bit more freedom, a little bit more independence in our realm. And that is a very vast con contrast to the earlier energies that we were sitting in with the moon squaring Venus, because, you know, Venus wants that closeness. She wants that intimacy. She wants that connection, but she just doesn't know how to go about getting it right now. So the moon interacting with Uranus right now is like this spark, like this aha moment, like I get it. I know exactly where I can balance the scales. I know exactly how I can still be a part of a partnership and still remain independent. I get it how I can have these intimate connections with the people that I love, but not lose myself in amongst that relationship and still maintain my own individuality. This again, Libra and energy, we're about compromise, meeting in the middle. We're about negotiating, especially within our own selves first and foremost. And this is a huge aha 
moment for us. But in typical fashion, just when we take a huge step forward, that dark force agenda comes in trying to pull us back. We are going to get that energy with the moon opposing sitting across from Chiron, the wounded healer sitting in that Aries energy. So Libra energy, Aries energy sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. Aries energy very much about me, myself, the individual. What do I want? What do I need? What do I desire? Where's my pain, my trauma, my suffering? What do I deserve, right? Where the Libra energy is about the team, the partnership, the group, very people pleasing. We tend to lose ourselves, our own wants, needs, and desires when thinking about other people and how other people may perceive us for going after what it is that we want or, you know, how people may think that we are selfish for putting ourselves first. There's some wounds coming up here and the fears and the doubts and the insecurities that we're having by trying to contemplate what is right for us, what do we want, what do we need, what do we desire, suddenly, like I said, we get that narrative come in, well, what are people going to think? Well, you know, what are people going to say? This is an unraveling, if you will, of understanding where it is that many of us make decisions, not because they're right for us. We make decisions based off of what we think other people would think would be the right decisions for us. And that whole narrative needs a lot more balance, a lot more peace, a lot more harmony in it, um, because many of us have been living in that people pleasing energy, which is an extreme energy for far too long. The moon interacts with the true node in such a way that would suggest that something's going to come at us from the outside realm that gives us an opportunity to learn exactly where it is that we've been putting other people's wants, needs, and desires before our own, where it is that we've been putting other people's point of view and opinions before our own, and where it is that we have essentially been blocking ourselves and doing a disservice to ourselves because we allow the thoughts and the opinions of other people infiltrate into our perspective, into our emotions, into our thoughts, therefore derailing our alignment with our higher selves. Is it going to feel good? No. Is it supposed to feel good? No. What are we supposed to learn from it? Where to pull back from giving other people that much power over us and where to pull that power back into ourselves to build ourselves up, to make ourselves feel confident in doing what is right for us first and foremost. The moon trines Mars. Mars is retrograde and Gemini energy. Gemini energy is an air energy. The moon is in Libra energy, in air energy. What we get, what we get is a beautiful harmonization between our emotional realm and our wants, our needs, our passions, our desires. That's what Mars is all about. Now, granted, Mars would be, prefer to be direct, taking action out in the world in order to, you know, go after what it is that we want, need, and desire, but he's retrograde. This is an internalized journey. He's sitting on the intellectual battlefield of Gemini trying to debate the pros and cons of every freaking choice. This is a good vibe, though, which means that the earlier cluster F of energies that we just sat in is revealing to us what it is that actually makes us excited, what it is we're actually passionate about, what it is that we actually desire. We need this in order to inspire us, to motivate us, to keep the path that is honoring us, ourselves, instead of trying to honor other people. So this is a good vibe. This is a boost in energy. This is a little bit more focus on the path that we want to walk forward when we are given the green light go in order to do that. Now, Mercury is going to trine Uranus. This is a beautiful aspect for a couple of reasons, and let me break it down. Uranus rules over our higher intellect. So the top of the crown where our energy connects with the rest of the collective, the higher realms of intelligence. It's where ideas and inspirations come into our knowing. It is when perspectives change. It is where epiphanies and light bulb moments take place. And then if we're successful in managing our energy, we can bring it down to the lower level intellect that Mercury rules over, our ego intellect, where we can apply logic and practicality, where we can strategize and sort out the information and details on how it is that we're going to bring some of these aha moments to life. And the beautiful thing about it is, is that Mercury is in Capricorn energy. So we're cutting away the bullshit very, very easily, very quickly as well. We're only focused on ideas and perspectives and understandings and epiphanies and aha moments that are going to help us in the long term. 
And Uranus is over here, retrograde and Taurus energy, showing us in our inner realm what it is that we've been too attached to. Ideas, people, possessions, this physical realm. Capricorn energy and Taurus energy, our earth energy is very connected to this physical realm. So what we got going on here is a perspective shift, a shift in our narrative, a shift in ideas, a shift in direction, a shift in our long term goals. Yeah, there might be sudden change. Yeah, we might have to kind of, you know, uh, create a detour in our mental plane. Maybe we have a lot of revisions, a lot of edits to do to the plans that we thought we were solid on. Because when we get new ideas, when we shift our perspective, when we have a different understanding, when things change inside of us, it ultimately changes the path and the course that we are planning to take for ourselves moving forward. So this is a beautiful energy, highly electric, I would say, manage your energy a little bit better, because we are going to feel like anxiety or excitement or anticipation or restlessness, that type of energy in our physical bodies. Um, but they're in earth energy. So we should be able to ground it out. We should be able to bring our energy back into the present moment, connect with the five senses and still have these beautiful ideas flowing very easily within us. The moon is going to make a positive aspect with the sun. We get some air and fire action here, which means that our ideas, our thoughts, our communication, our inner narrative is very rapid with the Libran energy. That's that air energy. And of course, our emotions are all caught up in that as well, because the moon is our emotions. But the sun who's shining a bright light in the Sag energy, which is having us very focused on the bright light of our future, the possibilities of our future, the new truth, the new quest, the new mission, the new purpose. What we get here is that fire energy from Sag. We want to take action. We want to focus our excitement. We want to be excited. We want to be passionate. We want to we want to be hopeful for the future. And if we can blend these energies together and keep them balanced, you best believe we are going to come up with some doozies as far as plans go and keep that level of excitement and keep that level of passion and keep that spark lit within us and to keep those ideas flowing and to keep the conversation going within us in order to actually not just conjure up a light and fluffy dream that we, you know, would like to focus on, but actually make some solid plans and how it is that we're going to bring some of these elements to life. The moon goes ahead, bumps into Uranus in not the nicest way. So we should expect some external triggers and activations, especially when we're all caught up in these, you know, conjurings up of our future realities that we want to manifest. Suddenly, we will likely get a little bit of a bitch slap of reality coming at us from the outside world. Maybe there is new information coming in that will change our plans or change our ideas or alter the path forward. Maybe our, you know, what we had planned is just falling apart. Maybe there's a disruption to that. Maybe we're thrown a curveball. We have to expect the unexpected with Uranian energy. But just know that if it comes at you and you perceive it as negative, it is not negative and happening to you. It is that you don't see the bigger, broader picture yet, and it's actually happening for you. This wild card energy, this sudden shift of events happens because the plans that we are currently trying to think up and and make in our headspace, they could be shorter. They could be, you know, a little bit more condensed. Sometimes our ego takes the long way around and sometimes the universe has a better way, but we need to get shocked. We need to get disrupted. We need to get thrown off of our course in order for us to see that there is a shorter path to get to the same end result. We just have to be open to it and we have to start perceiving these things happening, quote unquote, to us as happening for us. We're going to wrap the day up with the moon squaring, not a good energy, with Mercury. So our heart and our head, not on the same page at this point. That earlier disruption, that wild card energy, that information coming at us that just totally changed the game has us sitting in two very different corners of our inner realm, our heart, you know, Libra energy. 
wants peace, wants harmony, wants stability, wants balance, wants everyone to be happy. Mercury over here in Capricorn energy, to be honest with you, not so concerned with everybody else, more concerned with our own objectives, our own ambitions, our own goals. And so this conflict is coming in because mentally speaking, our narrative should be long term, it should be focused on nothing but productivity and progress. And the moon in Libra tends to get caught up in everybody else's uh, perception or perspective of what it is that we're doing for ourselves. So again, there's like this people pleasing energy that comes with this Libra and energy, this want, need and desire to make everyone happy with our choices, with our goals, with our ambitions, versus Mercury being in Capricorn energy, who's like, you know what, I can't really be consumed with everybody's wants, needs and desires. I just have to focus on my own stuff and hope that doing right for myself means that I can help and better those that I love around me.